Hong Kong police are arresting more people than ever, claiming it's for China's national security. And they're using the arrests to intimidate everyone else. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online, especially if you're in Hong Kong. Because over the past six weeks, the Chinese regime has been rapidly taking away Hong Kong's freedoms. China's National People's Congress implemented the National Security Law on July 1st this year which effectively means that mainland China's vague laws and arbitrary enforcement apply to Hong Kong just like any other Chinese city. But Hong Kong is not just like any other Chinese city. So the Chinese Communist Party is cracking down even harder because Hong Kongers need to understand that there's a new sheriff in town. For example, Hong Kong police have begun rounding up political dissidents. We told you at the end of July how police arrested four ex-members of a former pro-independent student group, because it's important to teach students not to think for themselves. And on Monday, August 10th, Hong Kong police arrested Jimmy Lai, the owner of pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily. Since the massive anti-extradition law protests began last year, which eventually turned into anti-Chinese Communist Party protests, Apple Daily has been printing articles in clear support of the protest movement. They allowed this ad satirizing Chinese propaganda and calling on Hong Kongers to shop only at stores that supported Hong Kong's freedoms. And on Halloween last year, they openly mocked Hong Kong police by printing this cutout face mask costume. So clearly, Jimmy Lai and his Apple Daily are dangerous to the people. Except, the actual people do support Apple Daily. So much so that since Jimmy Lai's arrest, people lined up around the block at 2 a.m. to buy the paper. Some people bought stacks of the paper and left them for others for free. In fact, the demand was so high, Apple Daily printed over 500,000 copies of their paper on Tuesday. They usually print only 70,000. Plus, people have even been buying the company's stock as a form of protest. The stock price soared 1,200% between Monday morning and the end of trading on Tuesday. And now, regulators want to investigate. I mean, how dare people choose for themselves how to invest their money? Anyway, not only did police arrest Jimmy Lai, but they also searched his offices and arrested some of the senior staff at Apple Daily's parent company, Next Digital. All of that was likely intended to have a chilling effect in Hong Kong's media environment. Oh, and on top of that, the police also arrested Mr. Lai's two sons who are not involved in his media business. I assume that was intended to have a chilling effect on Hong Kongers for having children. Hong Kong police on Monday also arrested pro-democracy activist and politician Agnes Chow. Yes, this is the face that strikes fear into the heart of the Chinese Communist Party. Before her arrest, Agnes posted on social media about suspicious men watching her house all weekend. I assume that was intended to have a chilling effect on Hong Kongers for having houses. In total, Hong Kong police say they've arrested nine people on Monday, on suspicion of breaching the national security law. Offenses include collusion with a foreign country slash external elements to endanger national security. And the operation is still ongoing. Oh, good. So this isn't over. On top of the arrests, police tried to block independent media from covering their raid. I mean, legitimate search of the headquarters of Next Media, the company that owns Apple Daily. When reporters from RTHK tried to get into the police briefing about it, they were told that only media that had not hindered police in the past were invited. And for the media who did get into the police briefing, they weren't allowed to ask questions. I assume that was intended to have a chilling effect on Hong Kongers who ask questions. But access to official press conferences is the least of foreign journalists' worries. 
Because now Hong Kong authorities are effectively blocking many foreign journalists from renewing their visas by creating extended processing delays. So journalists in Hong Kong who merely get kicked out of press conferences should consider themselves lucky. China's national security law has only been implemented in Hong Kong for six weeks, and we're already seeing authorities use it to arrest political activists and interfere with the free press. And who said massive bureaucracies can't act quickly? Unless, of course, this was their plan all along. But I mean, how could it be? Because before it was implemented, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam had told the United Nations Human Rights Council that the legislation would only target an extremely small minority of people who had broken the law, while the basic rights and freedoms of the overwhelming majority of Hong Kong residents would be protected. Well, it turns out Carrie Lam lied. She's a lying liar who lied to the United Nations. Well, unless she was just so stupid that she didn't know what the plan was. In which case, she's a stupid stupider who stupided to the United Nations. Last week, the U.S. government responded to the national security law by sanctioning 11 officials responsible for undermining Hong Kong's autonomy. Those officials include Carrie Lam, because she is directly responsible for implementing Beijing's policies of suppression of freedom and democratic processes. The sanctions were implemented by the U.S. Treasury Department, and specifically, they freeze assets like money and property these people may have in the U.S. or in U.S. bank accounts. The U.S. Treasury also published that list of the individuals online, giving their addresses, passport numbers, and national ID numbers. Hong Kong authorities responded by condemning and mocking the sanctions saying such a deplorable move is no less than state-sanctioned doxing that is a serious breach of privacy and personal safety. Yeah, how dare the U.S. government breach people's privacy and personal safety? And in retaliation, China's foreign ministry spokesman said China would be imposing sanctions on 11 Americans who behaved badly on Hong Kong-related issues. Those 11 Americans include Senators Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, and the director of Freedom House, Michael Abramowitz. But it's unclear what China's sanctions will actually do. See, a lot of officials from Hong Kong and mainland China have assets and property in the U.S. which can be frozen. But the reverse is generally not true. I mean, I doubt Ted Cruz keeps a savings account at the Bank of China, or that Marco Rubio has a vacation home in Shanghai. But at least there's some good news. After being detained for a day and a half, both Agnes Chow and Jimmy Lai were released on bail. Now, if Hong Kongers don't like the political changes that are happening so rapidly in their city, at least they have a legislative election coming up, where they can vote for candidates who support greater freedoms in the city. Or they did have an election coming up, until the Hong Kong government postponed it for a year because of the coronavirus. Yeah, sure, that's why. But now, there's the risk that the election might not actually happen at all. On Tuesday, China's National People's Congress officially approved the election delay for at least a year by letting the current legislators keep their seats until the next legislators are elected whenever that is. Which is to say, the Chinese government may have to keep delaying the election longer and longer for various reasons until it has a chilling effect on Hong Kongers who want to vote. So far, though, Hong Kongers are refusing to be chilled, which is one reason why I hope they're using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect their identity when they go online. With Hong Kong being essentially like the rest of mainland China now, the government and internet service providers may be tracking everything people do on the internet, and also arresting them at will. But whether or not you're in an authoritarian country like China, your government may still be tracking you. And that's why you should install Surfshark on your mobile phone, tablet, and computer. With one account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to Surfshark.com uncensored and use the code UNCENSORED to get our special deal that includes three extra months for free. 
click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.